that's pink. Never going to not dance again. It's BBC Radio Berkshire. So is it possible to have a good divorce? That's what we're asking on the show this morning. Can you split up calmly, considerately, with no drama? Stay friends, the other side of it all. Uh, We're talking about this because of news that couples could be fined if they don't go through mediation under new plans trying to ease the pressure on family courts. If you haven't been through this process, mediation is where you voluntarily sit down with each other, try to hammer out the nuts and bolts of what life is going to look like post-split, I suppose, with the aim that actually you're not going to have to do all of this through some lengthy legal battle. Let's speak to Sarah Davison now, who's a divorce coach from Ascot, who divorced herself about 12 years ago is it possible to have a happy divorce Sarah first of all do you think oh hi yes absolutely it is possible to have a happy divorce I think you know for some people their relationship has come to a natural end and in those cases you can find a common ground if you have good communication and it's a healthy relationship there isn't there is no real reason obviously there's going to be an increase in conflict obviously there's going to be difficult discussions around finances that's always hard when you start to separate lifestyles and it might mean some compromises so that's to be expected but actually yeah you can you can navigate that quite amicably if it is a healthy relationship can you only navigate it amicably though if the decision to split up in the first place was a decision that you reached jointly do you think well that definitely helps uh, but but I think it's about understanding why the relationship is broken down. Obviously, if you've been betrayed, there's going to be a lot of hurt and anger. If you didn't see it coming, if you really don't want it, then that's a, that's difficult to manage. I think in the immediate aftermath of that it is very difficult to manage but I think over time as you get used to we go through the grief cycle we go through the denial the anger those phases of being very upset and then finally we come to acceptance where we can usually see that there's a reason for it breaking down if one party isn't as interested as the other one then that's never going to be a fulfilling relationship for either party so at that stage it becomes possible to move forward so it is possible but it is harder if if it's not your choice for sure what are the biggest barriers do you think to divorcing in a, a kind of amicable way you talked about finances there but I think when you bring children into it that's a whole different ball game isn't it it becomes very difficult and I'll tell you why I think when we're when we're parents if anyone's listening who's got kids they'll know you never sign up to not seeing your kids every day to not being to put being there to put them to bed to be there to hear how their day was So I think when you start to separate the family, and that usually means that obviously you're going to have shared care, so there'll be some time with one partner, you won't be seeing them. That becomes very, very difficult, emotionally very difficult. Now, obviously, it's in healthy relationships, it is best for the children to have a good relationship with both parents. So we want to encourage that. But it is very, very difficult. And when you're put under pressure with that kind of scenario where it does hurt, it is painful, it is kind of a loss. And it's about adjusting to having that lifestyle where the kids may not be with you that weekend. Who are you without the kids? That can be a very difficult dilemma for a lot of people. I know for me, I found that hard at the beginning, trying to figure out what am I going to do with my weekend when I don't have my son with me? And so there are things you can do to to make that easier as you learn to adjust. And I think it's very much you've got to take your control back and realize there's not much you can do. If it's right for the kids, if it's best for the kids, then we as adults and as parents need to find a way that we can cope better and move forward. So definitely tough, but possible. How do you help people through that bit, though? Because that's absolutely right in the sense that no one signs up to be with their children 50% or even less of the time, right? And Mm. in that situation, that can lead to feelings of anger, right? And and that anger will often be directed at the other person if they were the one that instigated the split in the first place. So how do you get to a happy place with that where you can hope to achieve what we're talking about today and have a happy divorce and come out the other side and actually be friends and and really effective co-parents? That's a great question, Sarah. And I think this is one that a lot of people that I see in my coaching clinic struggle with. So first of all, I think it's about putting the kids first and as parents very often we'll do more to help our kids than we will for ourselves so if we understand genuinely that it is better for the kids to have a good relationship with both parents that will help if we can accept that and understand that the second thing is how do we fill our time and now this time when we are on our own is time for reinvention it's time to deep dive not to sit at home and cry and watch 
TV and eat junk food or drink an extra glass of wine. It's time to take control of our life and think, okay, what can I do right now that's going to improve my life to maybe even potentially make me a better parent? If your life is more balanced, if you have something exciting to look forward to on those times, then it can help you to start to rebalance your life and create a future you're excited to live. So when you're always mom or dad, very little time for you. So this is you time. This is time to think about what you want. Um, A lot of your married friends are probably quite jealous that you get time off. You're not doing kids activities. You actually go to maybe, you know, get your nails done or go and spend time with people that you really enjoy spending time with without the kids around or maybe learning a new skill, starting a new business. I had a client recently who restarted her online jewelry business in that time she didn't have her daughter, which kept her occupied, also created an extra income stream for her, which she really needed after the divorce. And actually now she finds that time quite therapeutic for her. So I'm not saying it's easy, but there definitely are things you can do to make that easier for you and to fast track your recovery to becoming a more balanced human being, not just mum or dad all the time. Yeah. So if you're not feeling bitter about that, then you're not going to direct that bitterness at the other person. And you might actually have a hope of co-parenting in an effective way, I suppose. Sarah, thank you. That's Sarah Davison, divorce coach from Ascot. Are you in this place? Have you been through the divorce process and actually you've managed to emerge? relatively unscathed from it you're still friends Uh, if you've got children you can still co-parent really well together does such a nirvana exist i wonder 08000 321 333 on the whatsapp starting your message with the word barks bit of a guilty pleasure of mine now years and years here they are with king it's bbc radio barkshire